Hello everyone, this is Gali and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Your Dragon. Today we're going to draw dragons in dynamic poses based on different animals. So what you have to do first, let's open Google, let me see if you can see it here. Let's open up a window. And I don't know, let's try a panther. So you can find it anywhere really. Mine is in Spanish, as you can see, so find someone you like, for example... Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't know. This is a puma, but I like this pose. So if you want, you can copy your image and then paste it on Photoshop and then resize it. Something I do for practice and apparently my Photoshop just decides it's funny to do that to me right now. So. Don't worry about it, just scale it. You can also erase the background. Remember you're not stealing this picture, you're just copying and referencing. So it's okay if you don't say who it, who it is from. As long as you don't, I don't know, take this picture, post it online, say it's yours, which is not. So that's, that's stealing, this is referencing, okay? So you can take the taboo out of reference right now so okay you can grab your picture and you can try to make a new layer and grab a, a bright color and draw on top of it so you have your head which is looking this way and then your neck your chest then the spine and the legs and the tail so then you have the arms you can draw it in a different color but I would recommend just doing the same color. So it's just like a simplified thing. Now, if you erase this, you will get this, right? So the point in this is not just copying what you see, because sometimes if you just copy, you won't understand why you're making things. So you can copy this and then lower the opacity. And this is the fun part. This is when you make your own dragon based on this. So to make a dragon, you have to think of a dragon, not just the animal you copied. For example, you see the other animal, the puma, had a, a head here. But if you want to make your dragon more realistic or believable, you can make it with a longer neck. Like this. Connect it to the body. And the legs can remain the same. You have the other video, video in arms, so you can draw arms in that video. Right now we're just gonna do poses, so... So he's pressing his feet against a log. So you don't know where the other arm is, either Google another image or just follow the guidelines. For example, here is his arm, the other arm should be here, and then you can draw the other one based on that so you have the chest and you see his legs were like this you don't have to copy exactly the legs of the animal you were drawing but this is just to give you an idea of poses you can make for different animals so for example you see the tail like this in the puma or in the mountain lion, I think it's a mountain lion. Sorry. Well, the mountain lion has the tail like this because it remains in balance whenever it moves it. But you can make your dragon a different tail. Such as this. Or this. Or whatever you can come, come from. Like, for example, a tail of a puma or a mountain lion would be thinner as you can see here but it's, it's thick so you don't have to draw the animal you're making like if you have a reference of an animal don't draw the animal try to base yourself on that but draw your own character if you're making a dragon it will be a little weird to just I don't know, copy the animal and then just add horns and stuff. So that, that would look strange. 
So for example, the wings. There's another episode on wings, so if you want to know how to draw wings, please go there. Now we're just gonna make it so you can see better. So now you have a dynamic pose based on an animal. And this is just a dragon, you don't need to make furry dragons, you can make scales and feathers and whatever you want in your own. So, there you have it. You can just erase this, see? Similar, not the same. That's the thing with reference. You can make similar things. So we're gonna make smaller size reference. So based on what we did, we're not going to draw that with every single animal we can find, but you can grab birds, reptiles, mammals, anything you can think of that has an interesting pose, four wings, and even 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 mix them. Yes, I said even three times, but you, you can mix them. Like for example, a bat with a bird, or this animal has bat wings, right? You can make it with feathers, you can make many, many different designs based on different animals. So we're going to make a different pose this time with, I don't know, a flying animal. For example, you're making him look this way. And the normal, normal design on these creatures is to make them just facing the side, like this, with their legs here. You know, just just like the simple pose in a dragon with extended wings and the horns, and that's it. That's every this every single dragon I can see out there. The ones I made before, they all look one direction, and that's it. They just look to the side. So what we're going to do with this episode is to draw different poses. So you can ignore the simple pose you've been drawing for so long and grab another animal. The simple part of this is making just figures, like for example the oval is the head and then a line connects the head to the chest and the chest is another oval, this time it's bigger, it's a ribcage. And of course this goes connected to the tail and eventually, as we did on this one, you can find the legs. Right? So, you can have many different poses based on this. So now it's facing the side, as the other one I did, but he has a more dynamic pose, which means he looks like he's moving, jumping, flying and doing other things, more than just standing there doing nothing. So now we're going to make it smaller. I'm going to make a new layer. For example, if you want your dragon to be facing another direction, do again the sphere. And then the neck connected to the chest, and then the tail, and then the legs. As you can see, I'm just repeating the patterns again and again and again, but in different poses. The the time you want to make a pose like this, that it's looking a different way, or it's more complicated than the ones you're used to, try to reference. And that's the only way you can really figure out how things look. I can do this pose now, because I referenced before. And I've been growing dragons for a long while now, so... For example, you can add a different color for the wings.
and then I will teach you how to refine a pose like we did in this one. And again, the elbow connected to the neck, connected to the chest. And this is connected to the legs. To the tail. So let's do a simple example with this one, okay? I'm gonna bring this up, make it a little bigger. <clears throat> so once you have your dynamic pose, this time you can add different color. To your legs. Okay, so now you have this. So what do you do with this? Okay, you have your you have your pose. You already know what you want to do. You're just gonna resize it, put it somewhere, change the opacity. So now that you have your pose, grab your tracing paper or a different uh, pencil, a harder color, and try to add more shapes now. This doesn't have to be the final lines. You can just add the details. Here you can, for example, refine the head. If the head is bigger than the neck or the body, you can change the size, erase it, try again. And remember that referencing in this stage is also good. Then you know, for example, if the arms look weird, you can erase what looks weird. Fix whatever it is you don't like. And then finally add the lines on top of it. And that makes your sketch or drawing look clear, clean and, well, believable. Not just a mess of jumbled lines. So now that you have your pose, now you have your sketch. Try to refine as much as you want the details. For example, if I want my character to have spikes or different color of horns and such, I just mark them. For example, if I want it to be black, I try to make a little sketch to let me know that I want it to be a different color but that's just up to you you don't want that that's okay you do what you need to refine your character when I have the paws in a different side I just mark them so for example that's what you did right you have your sketch you have your other sketch on top of it and then after that, what I do is I erase this and then I lower the opacity on this. And I'll zoom in on my character, maybe even rotate it. And finally, then you just grab your favorite brush. And start making the lines. Your character. And that's how you make a dynamic pose into an actual character or a dragon. So here you have, for example, the start of the lines. And, uh, you know, after that I erase this and then I start coloring. And that's what I do with dynamic poses with dragons.
These were just a few examples. Of course, there are many other poses you can make, but I encourage you to look for different animals and make your own poses. We cannot cover every pose, and, well, I cannot make you copy everything. But you can start by drawing, for example, side view like this, with a different angle, not just making your character look to the side doing nothing. That's the most common pose, for example, as I told you before. But you can make your character more dynamic just by simply moving some of the parts you draw it. For example, if you have your arms like this, you can make the other arm like this, and another leg foot behind, moving the tail, folding its wings. Do something more than just a character standing like a stick figure. Like those horses you can see in mini cartoons. Like they look like this and that's boring, right? Well, try to make a more dynamic pose just by adding little details. Start by just doing that and then you can make different angles, different poses, moving the wings. Remember that just little movement in your character can make it look so much better. So that's all for now, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot more to come. And well, that's it. If you like it, subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you. Bye-bye.